Good morning, everyone. This is Scarlett Van Stuckelman with the CTI team. Um, thank you for joining us for the Credential Finder prototype app demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Bob Sheets, who will be going through the first part of the presentation. Thanks, Scarlett. And, uh, and welcome, everyone. Uh, a, the Work It uh, Credential Prototype uh, app demonstration uh, powered by the Credential Registry. And what this session was uh, originally uh, uh, planned based upon a September 19th meeting in Washington, D.C., where it was announced that a CTI, the Credential Transparency Initiative, which was originally designed to test the feasibility of a credential registry uh, that could be used to support an open applications marketplace. Uh, the CTI was designed to test out that concept, to build a prototype, and determine whether it would, uh, it would be possible to go to scale. On September 19th, it was decided, uh, announced by Lumina Foundation and the Business Roundtable, uh, that it will be go it, it will go to scale, uh, and it will be uh, managed uh, through the formation of Credential Engine, a separate nonprofit organization uh, that would be have a board of directors and a series of advisor groups to to pursue the mission of maintaining, an, again, the commitment to an open licensed registry, an open licensed. Uh, CTDL, which is the common language, in ways that would promote an open applications marketplace consistent with the original mission. The CTI team will continue uh, in playing a role in helping manage the transition uh, to Credential Engine. Uh, in terms of the, the purpose uh, at the September 19th launching event, uh, there was a demonstration uh, the credential, proto uh, uh, credential Finder prototype application that Jeannie Kitchens did from the uh, Southern Illinois University team uh, to basically show the power of when you bring together the registry and the description language together, what types of applications it, they could support together. The comments we got back uh, from that demonstration was, People would like to see the demonstration again uh, through a webinar and also to allow more comments and questions. We received a tremendous amount of input and questions and comments on the demonstration the 19th. And the purpose of this uh, webinar is to continue to engage uh, people like you on exploring the potential of the use of the registry and also to learn more uh, from you on reactions or comments that are, are illustrated, or, or at least the uses that can be illustrated uh, through the work at demonstration. That's the purpose of today's uh, webinar. If I go to the next slide, Scarlett. So what we're going to do is, because many of you all uh, that I think are on the uh, webinar today, some of you all either, uh, I know some of you are at the 19th meeting, and some of you may have come remotely. Uh, and some of you are seeing this maybe for the first time. So what I'm going to do in for about five to 10 minutes only is to basically level set, try to do a little introduction about CTI and the foundations of Credential Engine. Uh, and then I'd like to then we'll move and we'll have uh, Nate from the SIU team will do a demonstration, a scenario-based demonstration. If you all remember, there at the 19th, there was a video that had four scenarios uh, about the use of the registry from the standpoint of the employer, the job seeker, the students, and, another, and other credentialing organizations. Nate is going to basically go through those same scenarios and provide a little bit, a little bit longer demonstration uh, based on the comments we got. People just wanted to see more. Then after that demonstration, we'll open it up through to Q and A, and Scarlett and others will help manage the the chat over on the side. But we urge you all, as you're seeing the scenarios that that Nate is going through, type in comments or questions, and we'll try to uh, bring those in into the Q and A. But also, if we can't get to those. 
we will we will open up an FAQ on on the credentialing on our, on our website that will continue the conversation and response as best we can to make sure we're listening to everybody and and actually learning a lot which we already have from the feedback but want to continue that process after the Q&A we'll just then do a little two minutes on next steps so you all kind of get a sense of, of where we're going so that's the agenda for today uh, an hour long and most of it will be devoted to with Nate doing the demonstrations as requested uh, by you all so let, let's go to the next slide Scarlett when when we talk about uh, uh, and you see the demonstration it's very important I think to keep th uh, things in mind that we have three uh, things that work together and we'll go and go I'm gonna go over each of those but if you can think in your mind three things that need to come together first we've got to have some sort of a common language to describe credentials and not describe a type of credential but all types of credentials and that would describe them in a way that anybody would want to know to determine the value of a credential for what they're what they want and so that's what we call the CTDL which is common language then common language the credential engine registry would have been what has been called the credential registry think of it as a set of infrastructure technologies that allow us to be a repository to be able to capture comparable information about credentials based on the credential language so those two things come together and that's the basic infrastructure that allows it allows and promotes under open license allows the creation of an open applications marketplace an app market of which what we did was develop one type which is the generic type which is nothing but a credential finder in a prototype app which you'll see demonstrated today work it it is basically allows you to see the potential power of an applications marketplace when you bring together the two pieces of a description language and a, re a repository a set of technologies that allow you to capture uh, this information and also then an applications marketplace that allows any end user to gain value from that whether they be employers job seekers workers other credentialing organizations public agencies so that's the kind of overview if I go to the next slide let's dig into each of these oh for, for before I we do that it's very important that uh, that it's not like this a small staff uh, the CTI staff uh, it's really been the combined efforts which you'll see the the, the, the fruits of the labor of a combined effort of a variety of people and one is we have a really wonderful technical advisor committee that provides guidance to the technical team on the credential transparency description language uh, and at, as well as the, as, as the development of the registry itself and the work at applications so that's a really strong technical advisor committee couldn't do the work without them but also we've had uh, many of you are are participating today we've had wonderful uh, pilot sites uh, we have about 60 or so uh, pilot sites with multiple credentials you'll see today who have been really the pioneers in helping us explore uh, the registry but also the, especially the description language because many of you are the people that are some of the organizations you see featured today but also all the pilot sites organizations are doing unbelievable innovative things in credentialing and we're trying to make the description language capture those things we also have quality assurance partners who are who give some type of assurance about the quality of these credentials or credentialing organizations and many of them have their own language to describe uh, what they assure and that means everything from our our accreditation bodies to uh, to new players who assure the quality of certifications for example but also we have a bunch of interested stakeholders who have been a part of our collaborative over the years that have also think of this as we're trying to take the start of the technical advisor committee bang that up against all the great pilot site data that we're getting uh, and making sure that our credentialing language and the registry are functioning in a way to capture some of the of some of the great stuff that's going on now in the credentialing marketplace so with that in mind I just want you to worry this has been a great a group effort we have uh, benefited tremendously from all these different partners over the last year 
I'll go to the next. Let's go to the deep dive a little bit now into the three building blocks. Uh, Scarlett? So first of all, remember there were three things. Uh, the first one is uh, is basically we have to have a metadata that's a common language, data about the data. Uh, and so we're trying to do we, the CTDL is a way to uh, provide a common language for describing, and you'll see this in action a little later in the demo, how to describe a wide variety of credentials. We want to build off and conform to the World Wide Web specifications as well as schema.org because we want to make that we want to make the registry operate in the web. We need to make sure that we are doing this in a way that conforms to the future direction of the World Wide Web Consortium in terms of open link data and, and the requirements of schema.org, which deals with a lot of the search engines. So we're having common schema vocabulary, common language, about all types of things, including the people who issue credentials, the people who assure them, the credentials themselves, but also competency frameworks. That is uh, how people specify the competency requirements of their credentials, as well as how external bodies who lay out frameworks, whether that be uh, frameworks in, in labor market information like ONET or the frameworks like Degree Qualifications Profile, any framework out there in which people use to benchmark and use in defining their own credentials, uh, competency requirements, that also is, is really we need common language for. So it really, in, in the end, it defines the data for the registry. So if we go to the next slide. OK, so on the, on the engine, uh, it, the registry itself, think of it as just a set of technologies that will provide a repository. It allows us to capture information, capture, connect, archive, and, uh, and share the information about all these types of entities that I just went over. So I want to emphasize this is common language that describes all of these different things in the credentialing marketplace. Credentials, the organizations that issue them, the organizations that assure their quality, uh, competency frameworks in terms of how people organize and describe competency requirements and how they relate to external frameworks that they may want to refer to as saying, I'm same as this or comparable to, benchmark to. And then anything in the future that we need to have and store and connect uh, that is that needs to support an open applications marketplace in the future. So that's the registry. Uh, next. Okay, and so what I want to emphasize is these two things that we just went over, the CTDL, the common language, the registry itself uh, for actually storing this information, it supports uh, a really an open applications marketplace. But for us to kind of like think about and and get people thinking about what it, what could be supported and done with this information, uh, we needed to develop a prototype application, an app, that is the most basic one to address most of our use cases. And, and that was largely uh, the credential finder, being able to find uh, informa uh, information about any type of credential based upon some sort of open or filtered search. So it, it, it's developed not because that's the only application or, or it's anything that is the end game. It's basically there to get feedback, community feedback, on the design of the CTDL and use of the CTDL and the registry itself. It allows people like you all to kind of see what the registry can possibly do. And so it, it, it provides, it's a, it, it will provide the initial source code for additional applications uh, in, that develop in the future. Because again, we're committed to open licensing of the CTDL, the registry, and the prototype app that you'll, you'll be seeing today. So these three things come together to, to help us carry on now the next phase of our work which is really kicking the tires and scaling uh, the registry and the CTDL using the credential prototype app that allows our pilot sites to see how their stuff would be seen in any sort of app, especially a basic app like WordPress. If I go to the next. So uh, the most important thing is I want to emphasize is that uh, when you look at the, uh, the, the CTDL and the, and the registry, 
it's pretty important to understand that that we're there to to see comparable information about all types of credentials. What you see uh, in these icons are examples of the types of credentials we are currently dealing with now. But as the credentialing marketplace evolves, you're going to see prob probably different types of credentials emerge. And also, the way we describe those credentials may change over time. But, but I want to emphasize we have other data infrastructures that are designed to support one of these types of credentials around in the country today. But we're trying to now say the registry is needs to make sure we address all types of credentials and also how they connect to each other. Because increasingly, all these credentials are being interwoven increasingly. For example, a certification may be embedded in a certificate program. And so what we're trying to say is we need to capture centrally through a common language information about all these types of credentials and how they come together. Next slide. OK, so what we are going to see today, it's very important to keep in mind that WorkIt is designed as a prototype a prototype app, one of many, hopefully, that will come in the future, that will, again, like I said before, provide comparable information about all the types of credentials you saw in the last slide. So it, it is designed to be a one-stop location for this comparable information. It's a way for applications to be developed off one central source uh, that's, that's now found in multiple locations. We have this information for licenses, for example, in one location. Maybe some certifications may have a credential finder. You may find I can look at degree programs, the certificate programs someplace. What we're trying to say is one stop because of the way the credentialing marketplace is emerging as these things become interrelated. We can't separate them out into separate silos. Uh, and and uh, second of all, it provides information in two areas that we were uh, told to focus on. One is bring competencies to the forefront, because ultimately people are seeing more a competency-based credentialing marketplace. So competencies have to be dealt with in a systematic way, and as well as, as related to, to frameworks that are emerging in the marketplace that are benchmarks for these competency statements. So they, those need to be brought front and center. And second of all, we were told that we need to have more information on the connections between credentials, which I mentioned before. We're increasingly, when I started in this business, most of the credentials were kind of like in their own lane. You basically had a, a degree and a credit degree and certificate market that operated separately from certifications, a little bit of overlap, but not much. Now you have more embedding of certifications in the degree and certificate programs. You have more cases where uh, we now need to say what are the connections between uh, not just military credentials and civilian, but connections between all types of credentials. So we were told not just one-stop location for comparable about all, but also provide better access to information on competencies and provide better and more neutral language around the different possible connections between credentials that would add value for stakeholders, whether they be employers, students, workers, or government. So anyway, that's the, the, the purpose of the day is to demonstrate the power of the registry through the WorkIt application as a prototype. Okay, next slide. So before I, I, just as an overview, if you all remember the, seven, uh, the September 19th, uh, Jeannie went over a series, uh, the, the, first of all, the video had four scenarios. And it had an employer, um, I think it had a, a young adult and a student, and it had a credentialing organization. Uh, and so what we're seeing, gonna, what Nate's going to go over to you today is going over similar scenarios. I and mean, Jeannie did three of those as well. What we're going to do now is, because of the comments we got uh, wanting to see more, we are now going to go through and have a demonstration of these scenarios. We're going to go with five. So you can see it, the applications from three different stakeholders. That is individuals, whether they be job seekers, young adults, or students, employers, 
as well as other credentialing organizations that want to discover things about the marketplace that they can use to make their credentials uh, better. So those are the, the five scenarios we will go over, uh, that Nate will go over. And then uh, we will basically um, have uh, open up the questions and answers after that. Go to the next slide. I think Nate, um, take, take it over to you. All right, thank you, Bob. My name is Nate Argo. I'm with the uh, SIU Center for Workforce Development, and I work with uh, Jeannie Kitchens, who gave the initial demo. Uh, this was two weeks ago now. And what I'm going to be showing you is a sort of expanded demo of the Workit app. Can you see my screen all right? OK, good. All right, so this is a prototype app intended to garner feedback on the uh, credential registry and sort of the things you can do with it. And what it does is it shows you kind of the types of credentials that are available, uh, such as degrees, certificates, license, licenses, badges, and so on, and uh, sort of what you can do with them. And uh, this app shows that we're including credentials that are designed to address many different interests and needs, including uh, general education and career-focused interests. And what we're going to show you is that users will be able to search according to things like subject areas and also career-focused uh, areas like uh, industries, occupations, and so on. And the credential registry provides a lot more information about credentials than you'll usually find in any one place. Uh, it sort of uh, serves as a, a nexus uh, bringing together of uh, information about them, uh, including the quality assurance uh, information that is available for credentials. And the credential registry provides information on, oh, sorry about that. All right, so these scenarios we're going to be going over today include job seekers, young adults and career changers, students, employers, and education, training, and credentialing organizations. And so we'll go to the first one here. All right, so in this first scenario, we're a job seeker who just recently lost their job. We have many years of experience, and we're looking to get back into the job market, but we want to kind of refresh our skill set. We want to see what's available in the IT field here. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go to our filters. We're going to select a credential type of certificate, because that's what we're interested in. And our current education level is an associate's degree. And because we're interested in the IT field, we'll go ahead and go to the subject areas and type in information systems. And here we see a couple of results. And we'll go to this one here. And so here we see kind of an example of the information that we can get out of the registry. So we've got uh, our basic information here. We've got a link to the credential itself. We've got our description. We see the type of the certificate. We see who it's for. And we see that it's been uh, quality assured by the Higher Learning Commission. We can see over here on the map that it's available at uh, many locations in Indiana. And in fact, if we wanted to expand these, we could see the, uh, well, all of these markers here. We also see that this credential has 102 competencies involved in it. And we see that the program it would take to acquire this credential will teach us all of these, which is pretty amazing. So again, if we're looking to sort of uh, refresh and develop our skill set, uh, these would be very valuable for us. We also see that it will take us about eight months to complete. And we see that it's good for several occupations, all of which are in the field that we're interested in. And again, we see that it's at the associate education level. We see that this credential is owned and managed by the Ivy Tech Community College of Indiana. And we also see that it has connections to other credentials. We see that it includes four, so that we'll get these whenever we uh, attain this credential. And we see that it prepares us for two more. So these are the four that we would uh, acquire whenever we earn this credential. We see there's some CompTIA ones and some Cisco certifications, always good for the IT people. And we see that it'll prepare us for these two as well. And uh, Bob? Do you want to go over some of the other types of connections that a credential might have? Yes, and thanks, Nate. So what we're trying to do is develop 
some common terminology for declaring connections. What you see here are two types of possible connections. For example, you can say part of, which means you earn these other credentials when you earn my credential. You could also say prepares for, means I provide foundational stuff that will prepare you for a credential, even if you don't uh, get the credential while you're earning my credential. You could say required for, that my credential is required for another credential. You could declare advanced standing, means that my uh, uh, credential provides advanced standing in earning another credential based upon reductions of time and or money. Um, you can say many, so we're trying to develop a common way for people to tag their credentials with other credentials to best define uh, relationships with cr other credentials that people would want to know about, but using language that is not unique to any other type of credential, for example, credit. Uh, so we have to have a common language on connections, and we want to allow any credentialing organization to declare connections to their other of their own credentials or credentials that are owned, created, and managed by other credentialing organizations. That kind of gives you a sense. We'd be happy to go over some more questions later through Q&A. Back to you, Nate. All right, thank you. And so in addition to the connections to other credentials, we also see that we can find out what the requirements are for getting this credential. So we see that it requires this particular learning opportunity here. We see that this is a blended learning uh, course that is competency-based, face-to-face, or available online. We see uh, even what it'll cost us. And we can also see what it requires here. So we have a, a secondary school diploma, which is essentially a high school diploma, or a GED. And we can also get some other information about what it, re what it requires. All right, so let's move on to our next scenario here. So in the next scenario, we are a young adult who is looking to advance our computer programming career. And we have some college and work experience, but we earn a bachelor's degree. So again, we'll go to our filters. We'll pick a credential type of bachelor's degree. And because we're interested about in programming, we'll go to competencies. We'll type in children. And here we see two fairly similar results, both of which are interesting to us. So one of the features that uh, the Work It prototype app is providing is the ability to compare credentials. So we'll just hit these two buttons over here. We see that it flashes orange down here. And if we go to the Compare Selected page, we can see a sort of a summary of the two credentials here. And we can see not only uh, who owns them and, and get a, an overview of them. We can see their type, the uh, level. We see they're both bachelor's degrees. We see the industries that they are uh, attached to. We see the occupations we can get with them, all of them computer related, all very interesting to us. We can get an idea of what they will cost us. And again, this is all information that we would pull from the registry. We can even get an idea of roughly how long it'll take us to get there. And if there are any conditions to that, uh, there's you know, additional details here. So we'll go ahead and pick uh, this one from Brandman University. And again, we will see uh, some helpful information about the credential, the uh, description, the type. We see that uh, the credential, uh, the organization that owns this credential is uh, accredited by the WASC Senior College and University Commission. We need an idea of uh, where they're at. We see the competencies for this credential. So obviously, as a bachelor's degree, it's going to be attached to a uh, course and that course will teach us all of these competencies here. Quite a few. So again, it's valuable for us to know what we'd be getting into, what we would have at the end of it. We see that it'll take us about 44 months to earn that. And we see the industries and occupations that that credential is related to. And again, we see that that is at the bachelor's level. And over here, we see the jurisdictions. Now this it basically indicates where this credential would be useful to you. So you can see that it's uh, valid online, it's valid globally, especially in the United States. You can also see the costs and subjects for that uh, program. And again, we see the connections to other credentials. So we see that this credential 
uh, will earn us all of these. We're interested in programming. So we can see that we get not only get uh, some sort of the basic computer courses, but we also get uh, more Microsoft and programming related ones. So that's excellent. And again, we can take a look at the requirements. And so this is the course that I mentioned earlier. And we get an idea of what the details for those requirements are. All right. So go ahead and go back to our search here and take a look at the next scenario. So in the next scenario, a university is updating the information on a bachelor's degree in IT, and they're interested in updating the competencies and embedding certifications within that degree. They're looking for examples of degrees with embedded certifications. So go to our filters, we'll look for another bachelor's degree. And for our competencies, we'll look for network security, wireless communication, and topology. And so we see we have a credential here from Western Governors University. And we'll go ahead and hit that. And once again, we see the basic information about the credential. Now, one thing we notice is there's no map on this one because it is primarily an online uh, credential. Uh, Western Governors University operates primarily online. And again, we see the type and who it's for. We see there's a lot of quality assurance information on this credential. And we see it has 162 competencies that will get through this bachelor's degree program, all online. We'll see that it'll take us between one and three years, and then we see some uh, detailed information about that time period, or about that uh, estimated time period. We see the industries and occupations that this credential is related to, and again, the level, cost, and subjects. We see that this credential includes, again, our CompTIA credentials and uh, some web design things. And again, we can take a look at the requirements and such for it. All right. In our next scenario, at school, a student learned about production jobs in manufacturing, and we want to know what uh, industry recognized credentials we can earn in uh, high school, and uh, what types of jobs those who qualify us for. So, go to our education level, and we'll say that we're a high school student, and we'll go to our occupations filter. And because we're interested in manufacturing, type production. And you see we have uh, some of the NAICS codes here. So we'll select the Manufacturing Production Technicians one. And we see several MSSC ones. So go to the Certified Production Technician. And once again, we see that it's available online. We get some uh, more detailed information about it. We can see where it's applicable. You can see that it's uh, created and owned by MSSC. You can see what it is and who it's for. You can see the quality assurance that's on that. And we see this one has 40 competencies. You can see that this one, notice that this assesses, this assesses these competencies. So the MSSC one is connected to an assessment, and we will be tested on all of these. We'll see that uh, preparing for that will take us between one and six months, depending on whether we are full-time or part-time. We see that it applies to these industries and these occupations. And we see that this one is applicable to several education levels, including high school. And again, we see its connections to other credentials, including that uh, earning this one will also get us these four. We can view the requirements for it. And we see that this one has uh, four different assessments associated with it. And we can see some, uh, get, get the, we can get an idea of what these are. So we see they're all multiple choice, they're uh, in person or online. And this one is proctored. Actually, all, all of them are. And again, we see the uh, details of these requirements. So it gives us a very, very strong idea of what we would need to uh, be prepared for, what we'd be in for, and what we would earn at the end of it. We can even see how much it would cost us. 
can also see that this one, as a certification, has renewal terms and revocation terms. So we get an idea of what those are, too. Right. And so, uh, moving on. In uh, kind of our last scenario here, we are an employer who has seen an unfamiliar credential uh, issued by an unfamiliar organization in someone who has applied to one of our jobs. And we're going to look into that credential and see just exactly what this person is qualified for. And we're going to see if they are qualified for a, what, what kind of position within our company they would be qualified for. So we're going to start with the organization this time. And the organization that they gave to us is AHIMA. So we're going to find out what AHIMA is. And so the organization detail page uh, looks very similar to the credential one. It offers uh, sort of the same kind of information. We see, again, uh, details about the organization and uh, what they are all about. You can see that they're a very big organization serving uh, over 100,000 health information professionals. You can see that they have been quality assured by the NCCA. We can find out where they're at. We see they have uh, social media pages if we wanted to learn more about them or connect directly with them. Uh, we see that they're a certification body and a professional association, and we see the services that they offer. We can also find the credentials that they have. And again, they, they have more than this, but the, part of the registry will be able, one of the things the registry will enable us to do is connect organizations to credentials in such a way that if someone uh, you know, wants to check out an organization and see what uh, credentials they offer, they'd be able to do that uh, quickly and easily. We can also see the verification services that they offer. Now, verification services, if you're not familiar, is basically the organization offers a service that allows you to ensure that a person who claims to have one of their credentials actually does. So if we wanted to, as the employer in this scenario, uh, we could contact this organization, go to their verification service, and make sure that the person who has applied to our job actually has the credential that they say they do. And again, that's easily found uh, because the information came from the registry. And so we're going to check out their credential here. There's the RHIA one. And again, we see it's uh, earnable online primarily. We see its connection back to the organization here. And again, we have the same kind of information we've been getting. We see that there are 60 competencies with this one. So again, as the employer, we know that the person who has earned this credential and applies to our job has all of these competencies. So that gives us a much better idea of where to place them within our company. You can see, the, again, the industries that it's connected to, the education level, the subjects, and so on. We can even find out what that person had to do in order to earn that credential. And if we wanted to go and connect to the credential directly, that's what this button's for. And so that basically concludes our demo. Um, we'll turn it back over to Bob, and I guess we'll go into Q&A. Yeah, thanks, Nate. For, that's, a, that's a great uh, set of scenarios. And I'm just gonna—I picked up a few comments uh, in the chat, and uh, and then uh, uh, Scarlett, if, if you have any others that you're, you're you guys are picking up, please let me know. But I'm gonna take a few of these because some of them I can uh, answer pretty directly, and others I think I'm gonna have to refer you to the follow-up sessions we're gonna have, and then uh, see if there's anything. First of all. Uh, what you'll see in any of these scenarios is you're seeing a lot of stuff fast, right? And and, you're, and everybody that sees these scenarios says, God, can I just get access to this work it thing and play around for a while? And what we're doing, just so you know, uh, one uh, benefit of being a pilot site is you're going to be able to see and operate and see how your credential will be represented in this and so you will have access to the sandbox to kind of understand what we're trying to build in terms of the language and and the and the registry. So the people who are asking about access, uh, this is now a password protected. It's in a sandbox. It's uh, password protected. And over the next few months, we are we are reaching out. We've only reached uh, some of the organization file sites. We've already reached out to and shown their stuff, allowed them to explore. But anybody who signs on as a pilot site uh, providing information about their credentials 
uh, then we would work with to allow more uh, exploration uh, in 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 depth, so you can kind of get a sense and you give us feedback uh, on on this sort of uh, tool. The the other one we had a, a series of questions on competency and competency frameworks and their connections to assessment. Uh, what we have to, we had we uh, presented a while back to our technical committee uh, our technical approach uh, to how to represent competency information on how people are presenting that and declaring relationships to other competencies. For example, we had a comment about someone said, well, can you declare relations like same as? What we're doing is we're building off uh, Achievement Standards Network vocabulary about declaring uh, structural and semantic relationships between competency statements. We're going to build off that vocabulary. Uh, Stuart Sutton, uh, one of our lead technical experts, uh, is uh, basically was instrumental in that and is helping us build off that on the approach on how we actually publish, capture, and use information on competencies and their relationships to assessment. I need to answer that by saying, this, hey, and Nate, if you could just open up, uh, like a one, uh, like maybe go back to Western Governors and hit the the comp C, um part. That if you can, Nate. But but again, what we're going to do is because of people wanting to have a deeper dive in that, we are going. In the last slide, you'll see um, with with our uh, with our next steps, we're going to hold. Stewart is going to host a webinar that only goes into a deep dive on competency frameworks and how we, pro how we propose to capture that information and make it available uh, for, for applications, uh, and also how it builds off uh, people who, for example, are, are developing AI tools and others, how they can use that data infrastructure in the future. So that will be, and I'll go over when that's going to happen. So if you don't mind, uh, anybody who wants to know uh, about the uh, about the competency and how we're uh, linking COMC data to assessment data, I would urge you all to go into more of that deep dive webinar that you'll hear about later on. We also had a bunch of questions about developing your own application. The registry will support an open API that allow any developer to build off the registry in any way they can. But in addition, we're uh, the, uh, the CTI and the Credential Engine, over the next six months, we will be working with two to three states or regional partnerships to show how they can capitalize on using the registry to create their own directories of credentials based upon their own criteria. For example, a regional manufacturing partnership may want to develop their own application that builds off the registry by only listing those credentials that are being used in the uh, relevant to the manufacturing sector in their region and build uh, that kind of a registry only for their partnership. You could also see where a state uh, who wants to develop any sort of provider list or list of credentials in one place could actually just constrain the filters of this to only be relevant to their own state and build an application on top. So anybody who's interested in uh, states or regions who want to explore that use, uh, please uh, be in contact with one of us on the CTI team over the next uh, few months here as we kind of select uh, who, uh, what would be the uh, best way to, to work on that. Um, the other one, I, I think there was other questions, I think it's just mostly on applications. Uh, but Carla, any other questions you picked up on the chat that I may have missed? Nate, can you um, show a side-by-side -side comparison, please? Uh, sure. Just a moment. I'll set that up. Go ahead and compare the Western Governors one. And I believe you already have the Brandman one selected. 
So this is the uh, comparison that we, we uh, demoed earlier. Essentially, we have two similar credentials, one from Brandman University and one from Western Governors. And uh, was there anything specific you were looking for in terms of uh, what you wanted to see? Callie Morrison, if there is anything specific you would like to see with a side-by-side -side comparison, go ahead and let us know in the chat. Getting a lot of great questions here. Yeah, no, a lot of great. I'm just trying to go through them really fast. But again, you can build up a comparison template in any way you want. So don't think these are the only things you can compare. Uh, this is just an example of what an application could do. Right, right. And if you were to look at the information on the detail pages, again, all this information came from the registry. So you could build an application that compares, you know, some of this, all of it, certain portions of it that target your audience. Uh, kind of what we're, our goal is, our goal is with this, other than getting feedback, is to just sort of show how much information, you know, you, you can have. Uh, we know that people will be building apps that target specific subsets of this information, you know, for, for more focused purposes, more focused audiences, things like that. But our goal is just to kind of hey, even hey, hey, like everything yeah, you can do. Hey, hey Nate, can, can you go back to the filters? Sure. Uh, and, and uh, we had a question about, well, how does anybody know uh, what to say, what they're looking for? And if, if you uh, look at a lot of the use cases that we got from employers, uh, use cases mean you got to design the registry for users to get value, right? So we have, we're based on use cases. And use cases were developed from every different standpoint, employers, students, whatever. And so what we determined in the use cases, we had to have an open thing where they could type something in, kind of like an open search, uh, as well as filters. And what we found was the kind of use cases were trying to based upon either a job opportunity or a subject area that they were interested in, because we don't want to make this related only to career-related credentials. So we had to identify some filters that would, that would allow them also not just have open search, but also use filters to go through and select. And that's why we are using competencies, uh, different credential types, releasing subject areas, uh, occupations, industries, to allow people to have kind of filtered um, like assistance in searching based on their own interests. But that's a great question on how we do this. I'm not so sure that another application developed may do this, maybe use that data better. But at least kind of answer is we're trying to have somebody who just want to type in something, what they're looking for, but also use filtered search based upon uh, what they're interested in, whether that be career related or not career related. For example, subject area is neutral with regard to career, non-career. And some people maybe just look up, I want to learn something about something. And that's pretty more like competency. So again, that's why we did the filters, just to show that the registry can support uh, both. Um, anything else? Nate, Scarlett, you guys are picking up on that chat? Uh, are the uh, questions here? Yeah, hey, uh, they had some great uh, questions about assertions. Um, we have, in this one, the assertions uh, and that we're showing today are made by, like assertions on quality assurance, they're made by uh, the credentialing organization. But we also, in the registry, support confirmation by the quality assurance entities who are publishing to the registry who they accredit. So we want eventually to say it's stronger if we have assertions from both sides. But again, the one you're seeing today is an assertions by the credentialing organization about some about another credential or an, uh, another quality assurance entity. Uh, that's that's what you're seeing today in terms of the data being revealed. But we also have able to capture on the registry assertions from the other side. Any other questions? Please? We have about five more minutes by my count, Scarlett, don't we? So. Right. Yes. Anything else um, here? There's uh, a question. 
asking how they can be, a, Dr. Fredderman would like to be a part of the transparency initiative and if there were any opportunities and who we should speak with. Okay, well, we're going to go over that at the very end, but thank you for thank you for your interest and we'd love to have all of you on, on the webinar today get involved and there's many different mechanisms to get involved and we're going to go over those at the end. And by the way, it, and, and, it, and we're going to show you Depending on your interest and, and expertise, there's many different avenues, and we'll go over each of those. But thank you for your interest. Anything else, Carl, you're picking up? I'm trying to go over real fast here. I was trying to put them in buckets, but maybe not successfully. <laughs> um, there's just so many, and I just want to make sure we highlight. No, and, but, but by the way, we are going to uh, analyze these in more in-depth and issue an FAQs. Uh, that will be posted uh, on our site, and I'll go over that in a minute too. But we don't want to, we want to lose any of your insights for sure. I do see one here. Uh, I know privacy issues if an employer wants to verify an applicant's credential status. So, uh, one of the things that the registry is actually not designed to do is handle personal information. Uh, it's not a registry of who has what credentials. It's a registry of the credentials themselves. Uh, so that kind of information wouldn't come from the registry. Uh, I assume that question was uh, related to the verification services we went over earlier. So what that would be is, is the employer in that scenario would go directly to the organization uh, themselves uh, to get the information about uh, who has what credential in that case. So the privacy and whatnot uh, would be between the employer and the organization that issued the credential. Uh, that information does not go through the registry. Uh, does that help answer yeah, that question? And, and, yeah, that, that's a great point. I'm glad you did. And, you can show on one of them where we anybody any organization that has a verification service that's part of the information we we uh, allow people to see. But the use case we got from the employers and Nate went over was many times employers are getting people to uh, applying for jobs in which they're listing credentials that and by a credential organizations they've never heard of, and so we want to make sure that the employer or the or the recruitment um, consultant can do their due diligence and pull in information about the credential, like Nate said, not the individual, but about the credential and the credential organization. And then they can actually do a direct links to what Nate is showing now, any verification service provided by the organization to confirm that that individual has that credential and any other related information about that individual. So that's, that was a, the, the number one use case we got from the employer community. Well, there was two use cases from the employer community. They wanted to search by competency and, and quality assurance uh, on anything related to the skill sets that they, were in, that they were wanting to search for. They wanted to have an open search on competencies, not just subject areas. And they wanted to find more about a credential they didn't know about. Uh, and many people are using these words like data science or data analytics that don't fall into traditional, people use different words for the same thing. So they wanted to be able to search competency level. And second of all, the employers wanted to have a way to research credentials that are showing up in their applicant tracking systems so they know what these credentials represent and whether they are going to be put on a list as being ones that we know about and are confident in versus ones we don't in the applicant tracking, but also be able to find out whether there's a verification service and what are the terms under which they could use that. So those are the two dominant employer use cases we built not only the CTDL around, but also built uh, like the scenario that Nate went over. Right. I see a question, uh, is there a way to search by location? Uh, we do have that. If I go to our credential search here. So we have a uh, map view that we enable. And one of the features of the map view is essentially you can either enter the name of a place or if you just zoom into an area and you click search area, it will show you the credentials that are available within the boundaries of that map. And so if we wanted to zoom in a little closer, we could do that. And if we want to zoom in quite a bit, we can see that there are several credentials right here in the Chicago area, for example. And if we were to click on any of these, 
it would highlight the actual result itself. Or, like one of the examples we had earlier, uh, Indiana has several credentials within it. So yeah, we do, we do offer a location search here. And again, the location information also comes from the registry. So uh, an app developer could take that and build essentially their own uh, you know, more location-focused uh, app uh, that uses that information as well. And do we have time for any more? I don't know, we, might, we might be able to squeeze one more in, Bob, if you see one. Yeah, I, I'm thinking we're about four minutes away, Nate. Maybe we ought to transition over. It was a great point about, uh, about yeah, to really for an employer to ingest the information, they would really need to have a CompSU framework um, that's on top to really ingest that information. And I totally agree. And that's why uh, we are doing a standalone competency framework uh, webinar uh, to basically take more and more questions because having their own skill taxonomies, they use their own or they incorporate others. So we have multiple skill taxonomy competency frameworks out in the marketplace that many people use. And so uh, what we're going to be, uh, we're going to go over uh, what we are proposing as a technical approach for the registry. And uh, that will come next. Uh, so I hope you're, we can answer your question on the, from the employer side uh, at that webinar. It's a little bit a deeper dive than what we're able to accomplish today because it's a separate topic in and of itself, just like assessment. Well, anyway, in terms of wrapping up here, we have like just a couple minutes here. Uh, but again, um, if you want to be a pilot site partner, that means you're a credentialing organization or a quality assurance organization. Um, is, and also, uh, that if you want to do that, uh, please let us know. And we can send you, uh, we're bringing in more partners up through the end of December. Pilot partners right now, we're going to have to kind of limit uh, how many people we can take in for now uh, to work with on a direct basis. Uh, but again, we have, uh, we, you can sign up for a webinar, how to become a, a partner. And we plan to keep uh, pilot partners coming, coming in to the project at least through December, if not later. Uh, because of our growing interest, we're going to open it up till through December. So urge you, that would allow you to understand more about a credential, the language, how you would represent your credential using that language, and how uh, you would get a roadmap on how to use uh, the technologies to publish to the web based upon that. And so I would urge you. But second of all, if you are a region or a state who also want to become a partner in testing out how you can leverage the registry for your own purposes. You can use the same email uh, to do that. Um, we have basically uh, some uh, the upcoming webinars. Uh, again, we have one partner uh, information webinar coming up on October 13th. So if you're interested, please email and register for that uh, before the 13th. Uh, the competency framework, this is the one that's going to be a deep dive on competencies that many, I think half of the questions I saw on the chat were about competency data. And I would urge you that Stuart Sutton will be doing that, and that is based upon a technical webinar we gave to our TAC uh, a few months ago. But that's going to be the deep dive on competency framework. So if you have questions about how employers can link that or, or how credentialing organizations can publish their competencies and refer to frameworks, uh, inside or external to them, uh, please uh, I urge you to participate. Uh, Stuart does a great job in, in presenting uh, the technical approach, and we would really benefit uh, from your comments on that. Uh, then we go into uh, going to our next stage. Uh, we are going to, because the registry is going to scale, we are on the 17th and 18th, we're doing a series of webinars uh, of how, uh, what are the publishing guidelines that are based upon how you currently organize your data, where it's at now, whether it's on a website, whether it's in structured data files, whatever it's at now, where you got this information about your credential, how you then transition that and translate that based on guidelines, on linked data guidelines, that's going to be presented to uh, technical and programmatic people 
Uh, programmatic means they're not a technology expert, but they know credentialing up and down. That's the 17th. That would be more like people like me, who are not technical experts like Nate. But on the 18th, we're going into a deep dive uh, for the technical people, and that includes the technical people on your staff as well as application developers. That's the deep dive on the 18th. Please register for those webinars. And then also, if you're interested in getting engaged on an advisor group, here's the nomination forms. You can come in. We're taking nominations at the 15th of October. Uh, please nominate yourself or nominate others to serve, either business, uh, uh, higher education, certification and licensure, and QA. There's four groups. And the last one is, if you're really interested in going into the detail and the plumbing, on the, on the description language and the registry, please join our TAC committee. It's really, I learned so much from just sitting in on the technical advisory uh, committee meetings and webinars. I learned so much. I urge you all to participate. So with that, I think we're out of time, Scarlett and Nate. And I will first of all, I want to thank Scarlett, Nate, and the whole SIU team who does all the heavy lifting on these webinars, but also they're the core technical team uh, for the CTDL in the registry, uh, along with uh, Steve Midgley and Stuart Sutton. So I want to thank them for making this webinar possible today, and thank you all for taking the time and providing such great comments that we can work from for doing an FAQ after this webinar. So with that, Todd, I think we're done for the day. All right. Thank yep, you. Everyone. Thank you, everyone.